Hi guys, today we're going to do some improvements of my 6040 CNC router. I think the absolutely weakest point is the table and that I've already taken care of with my new steel table as you can see in the background. And today I'm going to tackle the second most weakest point and that is the C axis. It's very very flexy and uh, actually quite easy to uh, improve a lot and especially when you got the 6040 CNC router you can really easily take care of the problem. So let's start fixing. <laughs> The solution is to make another clamp like this one and mount it up here so you get a much wider base of uh, mounting uh, contact area to really increase the stiffness of the c-axis because it's quite weak in the original and you have two options and option one is to buy another one like this as a spare part but for me that is absolutely not an option because I want to make it myself especially now when I have the 6040 CNC router and uh, I'm going to use an aluminium plate this one which is 20 millimeters thick but you can actually just as good use or MDF board or some either some other kind of harder wood it doesn't have to be aluminum or steel but I had this plate so I'm going to use it and uh, it will be perfect later to maybe do some test milling afterwards and see see if uh, we get any more stability and some less vibration so let's mount this to the machine and draw up a program. When I do things like this, I'm usually laying a wooden plate under so I can cut through the material without harming the, the table. And when I'm doing something like this, uh, I, I, the wood is perfectly flat for this kind of work. Yeah. I have done this and measured and it's only a couple, couple of hundred millimeters that it's different and um, because I'm milling the whole thing at once it, it don't do so much if it's not perfectly flat. It just makes it so much easier to mount the material to the table. So I'm using some plywood and then I'm using two pins in my fixture holes in the table so I can easily make it square and uh, also it's keeping the material stable so I don't have to use so many clamps and on this particular work I want to be able to mill as close as possible to the edges because it's a quite expensive material and I don't want to uh, lose so much so this is going to be great oh why not put the third here when I have the luxury to may be able to when you are able to put the third one without interfering you can do it so we know for sure that it's flat and tight and of course after you made the program you know if there, this is possible to to do or you have to adjust something but I think this is going to be perfect so now it's time to do some measurements of the old clamp and uh, after that make a program. Mm -hmm. 
There we have it. Uh, excuse the noise in the background. It's my 3D printer. It's busy working, but uh, I'm using uh, 2D contour on both the inside and the outside. And on the inside, I'm also going to use a final pass or a finish pass, so I get a good diameter in the hole. But on the outside, I'm only doing one uh, contour and no finish passing it and I'm also using tabs on both the hole and the outside so the piece won't get loose from the stock so let's start make some G codes and uh, start measuring in the plate in the machine so we can start mill after I made the program I decided to I turn the plate 90 degrees so I have uh, more clearance because it was bigger than I thought in the y-axis so now I can uh, start to measure in the plate and uh, load up the program and make some ships eventually Now it's time for the outside profile. Thirty-eight minutes and three seconds later, we finally. Oh, it's hot! Oh my gosh, it was hot. There we go. Now we just have to clean this up. Drill two holes and uh, drill a hole here and tap and cut this open here then it's finished now it's all cleaned up and it looks really good for uh, if you consider what kind of machine I've done it with it measured up really good and the finish is good uh, it's really good finish in the hole where I did the finish cut. On the outside it's a little bit rougher, but that's no problem. So now it's time to mark out where to drill the holes and where to cut it. Uh, so let's start do that.
it's mounted it turned out really really good it's so fun that I made it with the machine also uh, to make the machine the machine makes itself better <laughs> oh it it uh, no it actually turned out really good and the measurements uh, is very good in this machine I must say so it fit perfectly everything uh, I plan to put in some bigger threads to for the screws but there were no room at all so I had to stuck stick with the M4 but now it's so much more contact surface so this should be a lot more sturdier and I also mounted the spindle a little higher so I get uh, less force on it when I mill so now it's time to do some testing and see if the vibrations have been better. There we go. Now I mounted a little uh, square piece aluminium. It's 25 by 25 millimeters. And I'm going to do some test cuts in it to see if uh, it's getting less with the vibration and uh, quieter altogether. So let's start. Test some milling. Oh my god, what a difference! It was almost no vibrations at all. That was some really, really, really good results from the spindle clamp. It's so nice when you do some little thing and it makes all the difference. I'm going to cut to earlier when I milled the spindle clamp so you, you can. Uh, Compare the sounds, it's quite a difference. Hope you like this video and please leave a comment if you have any questions or shoot me a mail so I will gladly answer all I can and if you make something of your own like this please tag me in it so I can check it out. Bye-bye!